Amazing. Uh, do I have to uh, leave it open now, whatever? Anyway, uh, okay, okay, for all the people in the Zoom, sorry I have to restart, uh, but I'll do it very fast. Hello, welcome to the 52nd edition of TalkCSS. Twitter is Singapore CSS. Hashtag is TalkCSS. Website is Singapore CSS. What? Close that window. Uh, close which window? The YouTube. The YouTube. <gasps> oh. Why are you looking? So I off, huh? What? Can I read you or not? Can I? Can I? Carry on, carry on. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, uh, the te te technical, technical guru say carry on. Uh, okay, got code conduct. Don't harass anybody. Akong will come back and find you. Yes. Election coming. Don't do funny things. Moving on. Uh, shout out engineers.sg for tolerating our lack of technical expertise after four years. Still don't know how to press go live. Oh my god. Um, apparently, Xion, needs, Xion said he will show up, but because I cannot see who is in the YouTube live chat, so I don't know if Xion show up. But if Xion show up, everybody say hi to Xion because Xion is sweat king of Singapore. And uh, the, what you call, uh, stickers, the very first stickers that Singapore CSS ever had printed by Mr. Lim. So when you see Mr. Lim, only say good things to him. Correct, moving on. Uh, we have friends. Uh, our system meetup, Singapore JS, uh, is probably gonna happen like middle of the month because we have a, yeah, we have a courteous schedule where we do not clash with each other. Uh, our other best friend meetup is React Knowledgeable, who uh, will be streaming uh, on Friday. FYI, uh, uh, our our grandmaster Shifu, uh will be speaking at React Knowledgeable, so you must tune in because you know, what ah, because it's React Knowledgeable number eighty. Excellent. Host of the man is the interwebs because COVID is still alive. Um, yeah, let's not talk about it. So depressing. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay, welcome to my favorite section. Favorite section of this uh, useless intro. CSS curl of the man, as you can see, is a very uh, deep shade of blue. This blue is called medium blue. Uh, the reason why we chose medium blue is because okay, I must show, I must show the reasoning behind our choice of color. This is as close a shape of color as we can find uh, to PM Lee's magical blue shirt. Uh, if you squint, squint very hard, it kind of looks like medium blue. Uh, yes, so we are paying homage to PM Lee uh, and his beautiful blue shirt. Let's talk about medium blue. In fact, let's talk about blue. Blue is one of the primary colors regardless of whether you're thinking about it from light or from paint. Blue. It is the B in RGB and it is between 440 to 490 nm on the visible portion of the electromagnetic spectrum. Now, medium blue is less blue than blue because blue max out 255. Uh, as you can see the number on my screen, uh, the RGB value for medium blue is only 205. Uh, so it has less blue than blue. Um, if you think in RGB, that's uh, like 50 units less. If you think in uh, HSV, then it's 20% less blue. Uh, everything else maintain the same blue. Uh, color of the month is uh, medium blue. So medium, right, if you think about it, right, medium is like a descriptor. So we need to talk about this thing called uh, I ISCC NBS. It is seven letters. So it's actually the same cadence as KNNBCCB, but not all of you know what it means. So those of you who know, just keep it to yourself. Um, anyway, this, uh, this system is a, is a color naming system and it's, 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 uh, it's very logical because it's based on 12 color terms and a bunch of modifiers. So the modifiers think like uh, vivid, moderate, brilliant, strong, deep, very deep. Very light, very pale. Uh, medium blue equivalent on, on this uh, ISCC NBS system is uh, vivid blue. Because why not? Um, yes, medium blue, everybody. In on much of PM Lee. Today agenda. Today agenda is me talking about HTML and CSS. And then uh, we have a very long title. Tian here is Bezier curves, which will be covered by our mathematic a mathematically inclined friend, uh, Gao Wei, who is a uh, we have many mathematically inclined friends, uh, Moray, 
who I'm not sure if he's watching or not, but shout out to uh, Murray as well, who is also our very heavily mathematically inclined friend. Uh, but before that, uh, of course, we must go on to the section that I forced everybody to listen to. So we shall open GitHub, which I do every month, whether live or online, because clearly I don't know how to pre-open tabs beforehand. LOL! Scroll, scroll, scroll. Okay, I will zoom. Because why not? Big text is nice text. Today is the 1st of July. Uh, I believe that uh, Firefox 76 was released, stable release was yesterday. Or something like that. So if you have updated, you should have seen the Congratulations, you are now on the latest version of Firefox, which is 78. So what ship in 78? Um, if you have been tuning in for the most of 2020, almost every month we talk about ease and where, because I think, actually all the browser vendors seem to have coordinated quite well. Uh, the Chrome people are like, yeah, 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 ease and where, so cool. Um, Safari also made a bunch of announcements called WW, uh, WWDC recently, we'll talk about it later. Uh, so it seems to be a pretty coordinated release uh, in terms of support of ease and where. Uh, in case you forgot, is and where they are pseudo selectors, uh, like so you have more powerful logic you, you can put in into selectors. Um, the only difference between is and where is that where does not affect uh, specificity. Okay, we can talk a bit more when we talk about Safari later because you know people WWDC made a lot of announcements. Uh, another thing that was uh, supported uh, released in seventy eight for Firefox is uh, read only and write only pseudo class. Uh, so actually there are a lot of pseudo classes that uh, I would say not that many people know about because, okay, the very is new um, and it's mostly for like uh, form controls. So you can choose to style um, based on like form states, which is kind of nice. So I think required is uh, a bit more commonly seen. You can uh, do like required attribute on your form and then when people try to submit, then cannot submit because they never fill in. So okay, required optional. Those are, are for the form fields. Uh, valid, invalid are also, uh, UI pseudo classes, I think that we have seen in the wild so far. Uh, less commonly seen in the wild is things like in range, out of range, uh, this for probably for the range selector. Uh, enable, disable, actually they're also quite common. Lah, huh? I think for the radio and checkbox, quite what is fun is there's this state called indeterminate. Uh, okay, not for radio, only for checkbox. So whereby like if you have a indeterminate state, usually it's like if you want to select, it's like a nested so this needs to use in conjunction a bit of uh, JavaScript to, to, to kind of make, make it all make sense. Um, but then it's the, like the minus, which is like, oh, you check halfway and then they check everything, then they want to call indeterminate. So you can actually style these specific states with, with CSS, which is quite nice. Uh, Safari technology preview. Um, the last time I updated was 108. Um, so a lot of um, bug fixes and things like that. And because I've been covering uh, Safari TP regularly over the months, right? Uh, actually, the what's new for web developers in Safari and WebKit when they announced during WWDC is just like a summary of what has happened so far. So, um, if you click on the link, if you can, if you're actually looking at the screen and not like eating dinner, uh, watching I don't know Chen Qingling and Chen Qingling and, and and like listening to this because you're multitasking, uh, the what's new for web developers? This one is a link to the WWDC video. Uh, which is actually quite good. The presentation is is uh, is online presentation, but they're like code samples in everything. So um, I cover mostly the HTML, CSS bit. There's there's a lot of JavaScript and web API things also. So actually, that's it's not that long. I think like half an hour now. So you can go and watch. Uh, there's HTTP three, which is quite interesting. You can go and find. I'm not gonna talk about this. Safari so no longer supports Flash in in fourteen. So that's another thing. Uh, is and where coming uh, support for image orientation. So if all this flying over your head, uh, watch the video cause he got like demos and code sample inside. So no bad, no bad. Uh, what's new in DevTools? Uh, Chrome 85, there as usual, a lot of like JavaScript enhancements, but uh, the, the more, you know, the, I guess the only tangentially related to CSS one is now you can edit styling for CSS in JS frameworks in Chrome 85, if that's your thing, I guess. Um, there's also an article coming up from the Chromium team that talks about improving the browser compatibility this year, which is, which is a very, actually a very good thing. So like, you know, everybody can worry a bit less about having, 
like, it'll work in one browser, don't work in another. Like, personally, I just say, like, uh, embrace it. It's like, it's a feature, not a bug. But okay, okay, can. Uh, oh, next point is new in Chrome. Uh, okay, this one is due to popular demand from uh, Mr. Jacob Tan. If you are on the live stream, uh, I, I got remember it. You see? You see? Oh, hi, 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 Jacob. Uh, I don't know. You can uh, wash, wash your hands in the, in the live chat. Okay, you raise hand. You raise hand many, many times. Hello, Mr. Tan. Thanks for joining. Give, give face me. Translate your Chinese. So, what is CSS overview? Lai, lai, lai. Uh, I, I'm very sure I shared my desktop and not just my window. So, you all could see. This is a copy of a Chrome Canary because I like to live uh, dangerously. So, um, zoom, 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 zoom. First of all, open DevTools. Ah, uh, ding, 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 ding. And then, actually, I also can't remember to go where. I think, go settings, right? And, no, 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 no. You go to settings, and then you got this, like, nice navigation. I a bit big. <gasps> what like that? Why can I zoom up? Oh, no, it's like Hotel California. You cannot leave. Anyway, experiments. So, you go to experiments, and then you click on CSS overview. Then, I'm going to save, right? It should just work, I think. And then I have to... Do I do restart? Okay, let's try restart. And see if this works. Because clearly I never prepared beforehand. Then, zi anyhow li. Yay, got it. Yeah, okay, we start a browser after you turn on experiments. So if you go to CSS overview, uh, capture CSS overview. Oh, yeah. Anyway, I'm, I'm using this uh, plugin for like the cats because, you know, the cats are quite cute. But uh, I don't know how much HTML, CSS, and JavaScript is it on the plugin. So maybe it's not the best idea. Okay, let's cancel this and uh, open my own Singapore CSS website and let's try this again. Capture overview. It's so long one. Ah. Jacob, you got to try before or not? Why like that? <laughs> Throw Jacob under the bus. No. Okay, like, in theory, huh? You're supposed to see like a nice. Okay, okay let's, let's assume this is not working. Uh, I go back and show you all the actual how it's supposed to look like one. So, look like this. So, you, you should see like a summary of like, oh, I got how many elements. La. Actually, my Singapore CSS page though not very big. I don't understand you scan so long. But anyway, you can see your colors, you can see uh, you know, style rules, media queries, etc. Et so, it's like a. CSS report for your website that Chrome do for you. Amazing. Oh, process them long. Eh. Okay, anyway, we can come back to this huh, uh, at the, like, later. Like, I'll leave it on and I'll let it run. Uh, okay, what else, what else? Oh, this one quite controversial. Google confirmed experiment to remove full address from URL bar. Um, I actually don't have that much of an opinion on this. Like, I would prefer having the full uh, address. Um, I think... This is experimental, so I actually also yeah, not very, you know, I don't stare at the address bar like all the time, so I don't know whether it's still there or not. Um, but you can opt out, so they, I think they're turning it on by default. And then uh, for those of you, you know, for security reasons with capital S or just like want to see the whole thing, then you can uh, turn it on again, I guess. But it's an experiment, uh, so not sure whether this will be a permanent thing because I think the Twitter's quite, quite, quite a uh, vocal opposition to this uh, amongst the, the oppositions. Uh, so that's that. Um, last thing is uh, Flow Browser. Okay, uh, Flow Browser we mentioned a few times because it's, um, it's actually the only, it's the only not big three browser engine. So I, if you're in Junior Dev, I also got talked about browser engines during Junior Dev once about the fact that my opinion is that Today, right, 20 years later, huh, if you want to do a brand new browser engine from scratch, it's almost impossible unless you have an army of engineers. And a very army of engineers is a very specific skill set. Uh, Flow browser is quite interesting because they are not even looking to compete with the big three. Uh, they, they are actually trying to support a, a more narrow use case, which is, I think, set-top box. Um, they, they want to optimize for... for, for a different clientele, let's, let's put it that way. So, they have been, they, they are a completely different browser engine. I don't think they are based off anyone. I, I, I guess they borrow concepts, but I, I, I believe, if I'm not wrong, it's really from scratch, but it's not open source, so nobody can see, but because they are a proprietary product. Um, but they've been quite on about, like, you know, uh, giving updates uh, about their, their, their process. And they are also, because they are so new, right, they, their architecture is uh, multi-threaded out of the box, which is quite, 
interesting because everybody else had to build off whatever they had. So there's a lot of refactoring if they want to move to multi trading. Uh, Firefox, I believe, and 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 Chrome are both actively working on on migrating. But it's like you 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 are trying to change engine when the airplane flying, so it's also quite challenging. So maybe for them, it's quite good. First, from start, you can you can go a diff uh, you know different architecture from the start, which is different. Uh, so actually, what I want to talk about this thing called like acid test. Okay. Uh, and okay, click in, then you can see. It's quite cute. I think some of you must have seen the earlier versions of the acid test before. Because, yeah. So for, for background, right, okay, you, you don't want to read the words, right, I just summarize. Um, web compatibility, the, this is a web platform test. They came up with this so-called acid test. So uh, there have been three versions so far, but even version three was like written in uh, 2008. So it's like, it's not that, uh, it's not that updated, to be fair. Uh, first one is, is the, this is the this is like the earliest version. It's like HTML four. So if you are a browser vendor, you you would you would test uh, you would test your browser on this. There is a there's the there's the correct one, pixel for pixel correct one. And then like at a time when last time people never like standardized properly, right? Then it won't look like that lah. So like things are like saying it ah that kind of thing or like I don't know border wrong, padding there C things bleed into each other kind of thing. So I think today, day and age, everybody passed ACID test number one. Uh, ACID two, two, ACID two uh, is, is more, was more tricky to render, uh, so to speak. So there's like interactivity also. Um, so this is the reference rendering. So you have to compare it to the, you have to compare it to this. You must hit this to, to pass 100%. Uh. And uh, ACID three is, Acid tree is the so-called latest, but again, uh, 2008 is still like, I don't know, 12 years old, right? Acid tree, where's the test? Acid tree different, because acid tree is like a bunch of subtests. So if you run it in Safari, in uh, this one now running Firefox or, or, or Chrome, 97 is correct, because they never update since 2008. So maximum, points you can get today is 97. So 97 is, is, is like, oh, good job, everybody. So that's, that's, that's acid, uh, the acid test. So I thought it's like quite interesting to kind of uh, 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 rehash history. Okay, go back. Do, 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 do. Um, what else, what else? Oh, specifications. Uh, the web platform contribution guide published very nice documentation if you are interested. Uh, so I thought like the talking about the acid test is quite, quite relevant. Uh, like, I always talk about web standards, web standards, web standards. Then it's, web standards is not very far away. Like everybody can contribute one, just people don't want to contribute. But like, you know, it's not, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's the barrier to entry. I think they've tried to make it as slow as possible, try to make it more friendly. So now, now there's a very nicely uh, written, you know, docs and guides. See, step by step guide to fix a W3C bug. And then got like interview, la. it's not bad, not bad. So everybody look, uh, they, they managed to snack WPC doc guide. So I don't know how much they paid for this domain name because like three letters. But you know, people actually invested money in, in getting uh, more people to try to uh, uh, contribute back to the web platform. And everybody, I want to point everybody's attention to this amazing faith icon. Why is it? The faith icon. Okay, I cannot zoom a faith icon, but like it is a rooster. Um, interesting choice of faith icon. I uh, appreciate all kinds of creative faith icons. Faith icons are, are very important to life. Um, if you all have realized I've been talking very slowly, it's because I'm dragging for time, because my speaker never come. Ah, okay, now, now I review. Why is Hui Jing today talking so much? Uh, translate to English. This is why Hui Jing talk so slowly, because I was dragging for time until my speaker showed up. Uh, if my speaker never showed up, then I'll just keep talking. You know what I mean? But anyway, um, on the specification side, uh, nothing, nothing really much. is a bunch of updates. Um, for editorial updates. So uh, I think media query level five, you also don't want to hear already. Like, every month also talk about media query level five. And inline layout was updated multiple times this month. So I think they're actively working on, on the spec. So they are doing like three times. Like, oh yeah, it's, like, it's just like how I deployed my uh, pull request today. Then realize that, oh, I keep missing shit. Then keep adding like one-liner um, uh, comments. Who knows? Uh, so nothing much uh, interesting. Uh, the one thing that actually I wanted to talk about a bit more as, as part of my uh, drag for time strategy is uh, this uh, border rounding. So um, 
one of the, the one of my friends happens to work uh, at, at Gecko and he does quite a lot. His Kang Tao is a lot of the, the rendering bits one. So so he wrote quite a, I always like it when they the, the engineer the buzzer engineers write about uh the the, the back end. Cause he had to do he had to do like uh sub pixel borders. So sub pixel right is related to the the whole how do how to say ah uh, my brain not working. Uh, it's a it has to do with you know uh sub pixel rendering. Uh, so the thing about this is that it's not very straightforward. Um, the long long and short of it is, if you want to render something very crispy, right? Unfortunately, you, all your display, all your screen is still based is still like discrete. It's still based on pixel. No matter how you know uh dense your pixel is, right? Um. It's still one pixel, so there's there's definitely um you cannot shrink until minimum. Zhenyang, no matter how, also need to have like one pixel. So now, when you have a very 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 tiny border, like zero point zero one, right? Never mind because the you will definitely run out to one. So run out to one device pixel, quite straightforward. Everybody agrees. Okay, we do it at computed value, no problem. Layout algorithms perfect. The problem is. When you have a slightly larger value, like here, his his use case is ten point five. So ten point five, ah, is like big, not big, small, not small, right? So then, end up when you have a one point five device pixels, right? You have to do anti aliasing, uh, which is like to smoothen out the 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 sharp pixely bits. So now this is where the issue comes about because Gecko and Gecko Wacky and Blink all of them have their two op opposing views. And there's no good solution. So like, you are just picking, you are just picking which, like, both also got good, both also got bad. So what he did was that he went with, he is he he patched it. But like before that, WebKit, WebKit and Firefox would do, uh, would compute would round round during compute time. So the bug that was raised was that hey, how come my border smaller than what I thought it was would be. Blink doesn't do that. Blink uses another approach, but Blink's approach actually causes other issues that are not within the scope of the original. But anyway, his conclusion is there are no perfect solution. It's a very short article. So I actually suggest just go and read it. It's quite interesting one. Like always fun to see how like, other people uh, do stuff. Uh, constantly side glancing because I don't know whether he's done or not. Uh, but anyway, I still got more things to talk about. Uh, we must shout out my... The articles all very interesting, so can read or uh, subscribe to the newsletter. Yo, uh, okay, highlight two demos because one of them is by Olivia. So anything, anything that is local, I will highlight. Uh, Olivia does it again. Amazing. So yeah, cactus. Ha, ha. So amazing. Everybody, please go and hit, hit the heart button. Uh, see, I got demonstrate and show you how to hit the heart button. Uh, this other one. Uh, this is by. Ah yeah. Okay. It's not it's not showing up correctly because I never turn on the flag. Uh, okay, okay, we go to Chrome. Our vener venerable Mr. Lim Chion made a very Tokong uh Tokong backdrop filter demo. Uh so yeah, can view. Then like, oh hi, oh look, backdrop filter drop shadow. Oh my god, yeah, everybody please hit the heart button on that also. Amazing. Moving on. Uh you can keep testing, I got a lot of shit to talk about. Um okay, uh today's team. Today's team is uh busier curves. So uh are you done or do you want me to continue with Gongosu or do you want to Gongosu together with me? Yeah, I'll join you Okay. Uh, Amazing. Zoom 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 uh zoom meeting. Uh, okay, okay, you you own self, uh, OT, OT, join Zoom meeting first. Uh, I can start to Gong Gosu. Gong Gosu, uh, translate to English means tell story. Uh, okay, let's see. Uh, this one I'm going to prepare, okay? Prepare, can we anyhow leave? So, uh, some of you may or may not have heard of busier curves in your life. Uh, maybe your math teacher got tell you, maybe your math teacher never. Um, I will try to uh, set some context on why it's relevant to CSS because it is, because it is. Today, we want to talk about the history uh, of CSS animations. So, 
Everybody, you can take a look at my meticulously crafted notes that I actually just put together before I see up on today. So actually, it's quite anyhow -ly. But hello, everybody, you can... We will, we will talk about this together. Uh, so, the first transition working draft was published in 20th, of, 20th of March. Okay, the reason I put everything there because I need to click links. So, okay, when you look at all specs, right, the, you will have to have the date there. Because this is like the snapshot. If you keep, if you do the without all the date one, or you just go to the latest one, so you can see all the like, you know, uh, exciting bits. So they'll tell you it's outdated, they'll just remind you, like, hey, bro, this is like, uh, everybody, you know, you cannot keep saying bro, but like, this version is outdated. But, 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 this was the first one, uh, published 2009. Um, so, this was, animation actually quite new. Uh, when CSS, even until CSS2 don't have, so, Somebody was like, yeah, let's 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 in let's be able to uh you know transition smoothly. So the, the abstract is very uh it's one sentence, that's the best abstract. Can you like you know distill the distill the essence to one sentence? CSS transitions uh came up came up first, yes. Both both specs actually released at the same time. So like you look at the day, right? It's also 20th of March. Uh this is because um you have to have the transition first. Animation is extension of, of transition. So animation I also read Dokong. One sentence. Allow author to modify CSS property values over time. Da -ding! Amazing. So yeah, at the time, 2009, they wanted to introduce this to, you know, let people animate transit. The and 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 the math starts from here. Because at the end of the day, right, what is a transition? A transition is you need to change the value of your CSS property smoothly over time. Uh. So got number, uh, got number means got max law, eh? Uh, so at the time, SGV, uh, S, SGV, SVG already can animate, but at the time CSS don't have. But because SVG and CSS people are friends, there's a, there's a, where they are? Uh, there's a SVG and CSS effects task force, click link. So this 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 here this is the task force and then uh they it's actually a very quite cool like y'all want to do y'all can subscribe it's a public mailing list so it's like uh public dash fx so how w three c works is that until now I'm still very old school like it still so it still goes by the mailing list style of uh interaction and communication and what's fun about this is that you can everything recorded ma so you can go back and see all the discussion one very nice one so um. Rachel Neighbors, uh, I think the, the children, all your children nowadays, you'll probably know her as, oh, the person who write the React Native Dogs. Uh, but way, 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 way before, actually, you know, like, we are, we, are, we are quite similar in age. She was a award-winning uh, cartoonist and animator. And uh, a lot of web animation stuff, like, you know, cause it's, it's because of her involvement. So, let's go back to uh, five years ago. Five years ago, uh, Five years ago, Rachel Neighbors posted a suggestion uh, in this uh, FX uh, mailing list. In her travels around web animation, the community, like the, the animators, they want, because animators are, are, are quite, how should you say, they, they would like to fine tune their animations the best they can, right? So, okay, I think I should zoom this a bit. Um, so she was like, eh, can we have more powerful uh, timing function because, you know, like two coordinates, like not very fun. You know what I mean? Um, so she says, yeah, yeah. Everybody, yeah, look, uh, okay, I want to point everyone's attention to the date. 11 August. Okay, 11 August. And then immediately, same day response uh, by... Uh, Amelia Bellamy writes, uh, she's also like, uh, she's been the, the real, as far as I know, she's been in the CSS working group forever. La. Same day, uh, same day. Uh, just like, few hours later, people huh, already got, got, got proposal for the, like, come up with the explanation, then the proposed spec, then uh, uh, proposed property value, uh, then proposed more things, and then, yeah, within three hours. So this is, this is efficiency, everybody. This is how the, this actually, this is also a, a peek into how a, a spec potentially comes about. La. So basically, and uh, the maths part of it will be explained in more detail uh, by my mathematically inclined speaker. Um, but the 
transition timing function takes a number of, of values that like, like most of us have used before, like is in, is out. Like, by default, if you don't know how to do, huh, then you just put is. Uh. Nobody put linear one for some weird reason. But there's also one value for cubic visier. And cubic visier, you will take uh, four value, which is for two, two coordinates. Just like the most basic of basic basicness. Then people say, ah, yeah, these two basic already. So actually her proposal was like, can we have like more complicated visual functions, which will be covered in my mathematically inclined speaker's talk. Um, so that's that. And let's, so then it like, you know, then it trail off lah, because it's a bit, it's, it's very initial stages. So Q, one year later, what did WebKit do? WebKit implemented, oh no, WebKit proposed this function called the spring function. Uh, in, in 2016. So uh, we should all look at the spring function. Uh, it only works in, it looks like it works here, but this is fake. This is like fall back by JavaScript one. But if we want to look at the real one, right? Okay, everybody uh, install Safari technology preview, like the developer you should be. Uh, anyway, okay, everybody can watch this. Click on new system spring. Just to prove to everybody that is legit. Uh, canvas object. Ah, look on, huh? Is there's no exclamation mark, huh? Everybody, this one, ah, your browser say, oh hi, I know what Spring is. Uh, Spring is a timing function that is legit. If you try this on Safari, right? Safari will tell you, hey, sorry, I don't recognize. So must be Safari technology preview, everybody. So yeah, so if you throw, if you drag this cute little ball, right, you're like point. So the point thing, right, is Spring, lah. But like, so, so, so by then, right, this is 2016. Uh, this is like story time. Sorry, I'm eating a lot of time. But spring, right? Spring very specific. Spring can only spring, right? Spring can toing. Then you want to do other things how? So, um, it was like revitalized again, uh, whereby, so Rachel Neighbors chime in again uh, to say that spring, that's great, that's great. But this would have been solved with the support for more complicated, the Bezier curve function, right? Um, so if I can open the, oh yeah, Xiao never, they're not linked to the thread. Uh, okay, no, 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 here, here. So this again, uh, publicly available information, everybody, you go to GitHub, you go to W3C organization, then you go to, uh, yeah, scroll, 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 CSS working group draft. So there's like 1,849 issue. Of course, cause all the discussion going there. People got name spacing. So you look at the correct tag, easing tag. Anyway, this is a problem in 2006. Go on, 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 on and on and on and on. Uh, what was I going to say? I'm going to say something. Uh, yeah, okay. So over time, right, there are a few other things that are related to animation. There's web animation API, which is the JavaScript side one, which is, um, uh, um, mostly spearheaded by a guy called Brian Bertels. Yeah. Uh, then there are the there are the guys working on Houdini, which also that's that's another vector in it because you could implement this type of like custom functions, use Houdini, expose and do. So okay, I have to take care of that also. And then there's also the existing you, your your new proposal, right? You sit nicely with what already is uh, available, like you know, keyframes and, and like the rest of the, the CSS syntax. Um, mathematical sweet spot. Wait, I saw this earlier, but really? Yeah, yeah, previous one. Correct. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I read this whole thing, uh, but I never bookmark. Uh. Um, basically, there is a they are saying the basic one, two basic, and then the 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 to the power above the power of four or five one is too complicated. So they are like, oh yeah, cubic busier. Uh, polynomial is is. Polynomial is the solution, but cubic VZ is the mathematical sweet spot. Uh, so, Sarah Dresner actually opened another issue. Uh, Sarah Dresner, oh, you should know already, but if you don't know, right, she is a uh, unofficial, official, unofficial ambassador for VIEW. Um, uh, also, like uh, Netlify, uh, Dev Manager, Dev Advocate Manager, whatever. Uh, everybody knows her for her amazing view articles and amazing uh, animations. So she actually talked talk about replacing panel's easing function. So panel, every, every easing function you use, almost every easing function you use like in programming today, right, it's based off this guy, this guy's original functions. His name is Robert Panel. He, re he released this book 2002 uh, for Flash. And then he has since been like, you know, translated in, and implemented into a lot of libraries, animation libraries. Most of the time, if you have an easing library, it's, it's, it's underlying it is his easing function. 
So, so like just now was saying like, hey, can we replace the panels easing functions to support more like more better physics like, You know what I mean? Um, so they're like, oh yeah, cool. We have this uh, discussion, uh, issue 229, we just fold everything in. So now that issue is like, what wow, long, long. Yeah. Have you ever seen an issue that lasts for like, I don't know, four years? Don't have, right? Uh, CSS working group. Anyway, uh, so it got revitalized again last year. And it's actually very nice because it's, 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 it's a lot more detail now. There's like nice uh, diagrams and everything. Um, but the long story short is, uh, today, huh, uh, today still don't have complex uh, busier timing function. Not implemented yet, uh, because it has since moved a few specs. It has now moved into its own spec called CSS easing. Easing? It's called CSS easing, easing function. Uh, then, uh, and not just CSS easing function. They somewhat defer it one more time to CSS easing function layer 2. Because, you know, very hard, uh, very, hard to, very, very hard to estimate timeline of work. Uh, yeah, okay, like, like I said, okay, she had, like, clearly has showed up already, so, um, you should share your screen. Yeah, let me share mine. Now that I have set the context on how busy curves are related to CSS, and if I you all haven't fallen asleep yet, now. you can share now, uh, you, only you post can share. In the meantime, uh, while she magic magically gains permission to share her slides, uh, we can continue to talk more nonsense about specs. Uh, okay, so look, look, look at this lovely diagram. That's a spline. Ah, uh, duck. Okay, actually, there's no no point camouflaging already. We have like you know that ship has sailed. Now, be bowto, just be bowto leh. Eh, don't bowto her seh. Tall, 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 long. Still cannot share. Which one is it? Yeah, yeah, not that one. Sorry, I'm using that one. Put wrong person in. None. Okay, everybody knows where we are already. Oh well. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm gonna start sharing and then let the actual professional talk about these year curves. It's gonna be some nonsense. Okay, go, go, go. I can't okay. see anything. I think I can see. Wait, is it not? Can you see my screen now? You got share screen or not? Yeah, I got share screen. Manado. No? Let me stop and redo this again. Welcome to the world of technical difficulties, everybody. Uh, oh, I got chat. Okay, is let's it, see. Is it showing up? Yeah, Andrew has started share screen share. Okay, got, got, got. Uh, time lag, time lag. Oh, okay. Jacob say, reload browser, I did and it's super fast. Okay lah, okay lah. Jacob, you win. Well, great that you have supplied the CSS. Are you sharing now? Yes, I am sharing now. No combo, no combo. Uh, there's a black screen though. Damn. <laughs> Is it, uh... Can you just transition to the next slide? I think I am tra transitioning. I can see it, but... Yeah, okay. Why like that? Hmm... My excuse is, I don't use Zoom at work, I use Google Hangouts. No. Interesting. Uh, okay. Hey, but Zoom recognize that she's share screen. Yeah. yeah. Okay, let me do this again. Okay. We are doing everybody's solution to all of the worst tech problems, okay. which is to turn it off and turn it on again. Everybody must send us positive screen. thoughts. I'm using this because I need to draw. Yeah, I know. Yeah. But it, oh, yeah. I, yeah. everybody remember, if it doesn't work, turn it off and on again. Okay, like, yeah. Is, it, is this showing up? Is this page showing up? Oh, time lag lah. That is my slides showing up? We are lagging, right? Is it about lag? Are you... Okay. Got okay. it. Yeah. It's a bit oh, lag. Okay. It's, it's lag, lag, lag gao gao. Can... can... Yeah, showing watermelon. Okay. Right, okay. Watermelon is... It's like, I, I feel like, previously I feel that Vizier Curves is like... She wanted to ask you about this. What does Vizier Curve have to do with watermelon? Chinese called Si Gua. Because you know, you know the, you know the meme about Chi Gua Qin Zhong? Don't know leh. Yeah, so, so, so in Chinese, if you say you're like Chi Gua Qin Zhong, basically means you have not much to do with this, but you are still participating. Um... <clears throat> To, to be somewhat relevant. So, so it's because 
like Bezier curve is not exactly CSS. It's like eh, I already debunked that myth. Anyway, if yeah. this was a variety show, right, you would see the editor put like three question marks on top of my head for the sequa thing. But never mind. Yeah. Today you not only learn CSS, not only learn maths, you also learn Chinese. <laughs> Wait. Chinese mean not not really real Chinese. Okay. Mystery yeah. of the watermelon soft. So <laughs> Let's yeah. explain Bezier curves to uh, computer engineer friends. I, I am technically not a computer engineer, so okay, you can explain it to Shifu sitting opposite okay. us, who is a <laughs> computer engineer. You're an engineer now. Yeah, you're an engineer now. That's not my role. Yeah. But anyway, moving on. Yeah. So, <clears throat> so it all begins when we try to have some kind of natural animation. Um, oh, like the spring, huh? Point. Yeah, the the spring is new to me actually, but the like it's a very mm. cool storage. It's a very cool storage function because only TP got. So they are like testing. Like I think mm. they tried to push yeah, then it's like failed. <laughs> then like, I'm not taking it out, <laughs> so it's still there. Right. Uh. Oh well. So okay. Let's see if this loads. Um. This is Google Material Design. Uh. Design language, and <clears throat> it has this. Why doesn't it load? Um. Eh, why not Wi Fi? Okay, don't, not on I a hackerspace talk on Wi Fi. I thought 4G is okay. Then, okay, let me, let me, let me connect to. Everybody, this is how a professional presents. People use iPad. Ah, uh, not like us, huh? Yeah, they use okay. like. On, on Wi Fi, yeah. Type, on type on a keyboard. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then use two fingers to type. And then, okay. like, cannot, then cannot even open a web page. Lol. Okay. So, if you can see this animation, yeah. it has. It has two side-by-side -side comparison. There is one with easing and the other one is like linear. Why linear highlight? No highlight. Why so dark? I eh? Yeah, interesting. No, it's Google problem. It's yeah, not your yeah, problem. Yeah. It's Google problem. So so if you see the no easing one, it's kind of moving like steadily, but it's, it doesn't feel as natural. But the one with the easing, um <clears throat> kind of has an a natural take. And then there are different types of easing, like mm -hmm. Um, like this one kind of looks like you're throwing a toast like, like up to your screen, and then there will be one that's like looks like things dropping, like, like that, right? So, <clears throat> so how how does well, now they become bright? I'm so confused. Oh, but anyway, yeah, yeah, yeah. So why how does like a curve do that? So um. Disconnected. Oh right, okay. So updating. Right, okay. Must be patient. Fine, okay. <laughs> so so if we are to implement this like without the help of easing function, right? Um we do have another option. Like we can have this is divided into ten frames and then for each frame you can you can Punch in a number and maybe you you actually you are actually no actually you are do I, I I legit do do this for I actually did this very recently I just can't remember what I did it for um ah okay ah uh, yeah but it's okay well can, we show later show, show later uh okay. yeah, yeah yeah please yeah. carry on but like keyframe this is and and what I do is I eyeball it yeah, I, yeah. I don't really eyeball it like in my mind I just like imagine so I did a uh, zero to ten. And then 10 to, I think 10 to 40, 40, 50, then 50, 50, up 90, 90, 100. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, that's yeah, like, yeah. yeah exactly. That's, that's what you can do. And if you want to be more precise, maybe you can do some like physics calculation to evaluate like how, how much the thing dropped. At or my age, I'm like some... weighing the pros and cons. I'm like, yeah. my youth, physics calculation. My youth, <laughs> physics, <laughs> never mind. So, yeah. yes. Yeah, Please. so that's like your alternative. Tell us what the best yeah, the, scenario is. <laughs> well, well uh, anyway, here we have like 10 frames, but you can do better. You can do like 100 frames. Um, do better. <laughs> okay, 10, moving um, on. <laughs> but, then, but then if you have this magic cubic Bezier curve, right? Um, <clears throat> uh, there, there are some default ones. These are like, like shortcuts of the actual cubic, uh, the actual Bezier curves, but um, what you have now is you have this magic number, and then um, 
actually you do not have to understand what is really going on with the basic curve. Don't tell them that. You must say must understand. <laughs> eh, eh. <laughs> okay, I think my, on here. I think my my iPad cannot cannot drag and drop this thing. But anyway, no, no, you be more precise, lah. Use your hundred dollars. No, 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 it's not. It's not. It's not about. <laughs> it's not about the pencil. Like it's more about like the iPad, like interaction, right? Anyway, so you um. <clears throat> Let's go say something very snarky. <laughs> when it? things go wrong, blame it on the machine. Mm, anyway, well, um, <clears throat> but you have the option of this. You can you can drag around, and you can see what this curve looks like. Mm. And then the y axis will be the the displacement. Ah. So where where uh, your <clears throat> moving object um, is, and then the x axis will be the time. Mm. So if we look at like this curve, right? It looks like it's moving kind of slowly in the beginning, mm. and then as it moves, it gets a bit faster, mm. and then it slows down again. Um, <clears throat> so that's what this curve tells us. Like geometrically, we can, we can, we can do everything, and like our. <clears throat> so if you look at the the actual animation that is happening, you you can you can test. I That's prefer it. to have this with sound. Can someone, uh, <laughs> someone please do a uh, like use wavelength and then you can like mm, and I can yeah easier for me to understand. I need to hear anyway. <laughs> yeah, that's a nice yeah that's a nice one. But anyway, that's Somebody's why project. <laughs> yeah, that's why like our designers actually can give us very specific those numbers mm, mm. and we just punch those in like copy those in, in our code base and then we have their desired animation. Um, mm. <clears throat> yeah, so, so um, <clears throat> um, before we really talk about Bayesian curve, we know our end goal. Like we have those like only like four numbers yeah. and somehow we get to coordinate. Yeah. Correct, correct. Yeah, so, okay. Getting back to the Bayesian curves. Um, Patience. Uh, okay. Yes. Wait. Why is this? Remember, if things go wrong, blame it on the machine. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. Reload. Okay. Amazing. Slice, slice, slice please, please sing this better. Yeah. Oh, so shots fired. <laughs> yeah. So so yeah. How how does it like really work? Like why why a few numbers can represent a curve, oh, cool. right? Amazing. Um, so it turns out we are actually not learning from our peer computer engineers. Mm. We're learning from our senpais from like 50 years ago who are automobile engineers. So um, <clears throat> specifically French automobile <laughs> engineers. To, Everybody, to... do you all know how to pronounce Pugot? It's not Pugot. La. I actually don't know it. I did not do the research. Peugeot, Peugeot I think. Peugeot. I yeah. think it's Peugeot. Right, so this is uh, so this car, uh, was the first car that was built using this Unisurf CAD. CAD is computer aided. Yeah, computer aided design. design. So this oh. new system, which was devised by uh, this gentleman, handsome called, gentleman, uh, Pierre Vézier. Um, mm. I I like how the illustrator put. Everybody is busier, bu huh? not busier, huh? <laughs> busy, busier, huh? busier. You all don't, yeah. you all learn the right thing. Because even though every day I speak English, if I really, 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 really want to, I can pronounce things correctly. One. So, busier. Yeah. So not there, busier. There's a control, there's a control point there, apparently. Kind of cute. So, uh, busier, uh, back then, he was working at, um, what was the car company again? Ren Renault. Oh, Renault. Re he Renault. Re Renault and Citroen. 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 Everybody. Was but in yeah, case that... you all don't know what we're actually talking about, let me give you the Singapore pronunciation. Renault and Citroen. Okay. Can. So you, back then he was working on... Must translate. Uh, Singapore CSS. Mm -hmm. Research and <laughs> development. And he was trying to find a way to model curves, mm. and he was trying. He was also trying to push forward, push forward some like research funding within the company, um, but didn't get much support from from the company. But he did it anyway. Oh, okay. um, <clears throat> uh, I'm guessing on his own. I think there's a story to it. 
I if your so. boss say cannot do right, just do it anyway. Yeah, that kind of sounds familiar. Yeah, I know. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so um, yeah, so he was trying to model curves in mm. the car design process, and it turns out like modeling curve is not so easy. You think? Um, <laughs> yeah. Why is? Oh yeah. Okay. So, see. So there, there are multiple attempts, like, not necessarily in that period, but there are multiple attempts. Um, they can seem a bit weird, but those are all legit attempts. Like, for example, uh, in this diagram shown here, you have like, uh, you want, uh, you're trying to devise uh, an elliptic curve by uh, attaching a circular curve to like a <clears throat> to a square and then and then those uh uh <clears throat> those frame is you can you can you can squeeze that into a parallelogram mm. and at the same time the curve gets the shape um <clears throat> gets changed so you, you get a new curve that looks like that mm. um here is another way. <clears throat> so, um, this one looks more Dakong. Yeah, this one. Got projection. <laughs> this one looks more relevant to the car industry. So maybe maybe they did this attempt. So you have, uh, what you do is you have some shape that you um, <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> you create first, and then you put a projector, uh, <clears throat> put a torchlight actually mm. behind the shape you get, and then you project the the curve onto a wall. Mm -hmm. And then you kind of uh, <clears throat> note down precisely where each point is. Mm. Um, <clears throat> so, so that's another way. Well, it doesn't seem so smart uh, if we look back. But before... hindsight is twenty twenty, my friends. <laughs> yeah, uh, but yes. before we have this, like, um, <clears throat> have like now we know how to do this, or mm. now we know one method how to do this. Mm. But before we co really come up with this method, like all the attempts are. Not as trivial as we might think today. Here's another one. I actually, I'm not quite sure how this one works. It's also coming. From I don't understand the diagram. So it, uh, so you you have you have so a few springs and then you attach strings that go through. Is the string supposed to be the curve? Yeah. But that's okay, now. Uh, I actually don't know how you can actually like note down. Yeah, I'm like, what's wrong with using a pencil? <laughs> <laughs> okay, never mind, never mind. Do, do not question the wisdom of our predecessors. Yeah. I guess I'm sure there's can, a good reason for this. They can introduce some kind of uh, variables Force, uh. like by using the, the the spring. Like you can adjust like how far each of the string goes. Uh, the spring goes. No, I, oh yeah, actually now it makes sense because you cannot keep redrawing. Mm. Um, mm -hmm. I mean you could, but it's like, yeah, yeah. Okay, not, okay, okay. I, I kind of can. Yeah. Imagine why mm -hmm. we did Yeah. So but all those are smart, last time. <laughs> yeah. There, there, there are more. There are more approaches. These are only like a few examples of those. Respect your elders, everybody. <laughs> yeah. Basically, yeah. well, it's it's just it's not that easy. But then, uh, mathemat mathematicians say, uh, no. <laughs> if you have a close interval, close interval meaning like the interval but with the endpoints, and then if you have a smooth curve, continuous and smooth curve, uh, you are guaranteed to have a polynomial function. Mm -hmm, it means mm -hmm. uh, it's a combination of x to the certain power mm. with like some this coefficients. Part I haven't given back my teacher. This one I got keep, <laughs> keep for 20 years. Yeah, so, so you're guaranteed to have some kind of polynomial approximation. Mm. Uh, don't don't read the Weierstrass theorem. It's like scary. you're just doing a pink elephant. Like, <laughs> don't think about pink elephant. Then everybody think about pink. Elephant. I'm sure people go and click one. Yeah. So basically, mathematicians say you're guaranteed to have one, mm. but then engineers won't be satisfied with this. It's like how exactly engineers are allergic to the word approximate. <laughs> like right? How exactly? Yeah. Yes, actually, because if you, the field engineer is more like the balance between like, perfect and... I would say like, preci precision. Preci uh, precision. Uh, yeah, precision. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, most of the time the idea is you set like a... <clears throat> Threshold. Yeah, and then if it passes, then you're happy. But then still engineers, you, for engineers or for actually make it usable, we need like a constructive way of actually doing this. Mm. 
Um, <clears throat> so, so let's try to approach this uh, modeling curve problem together. So I guess one intuitive way um, can be, is, it feels like cutting a wood board. Um, so if we look at this curve, um, it's like cutting around the corner. So basically the curve will look like it comes out from like one side of, of like a rigid, like a rectangle and it's trying to approach the, the, other, mm. the other side of it. Um, so uh, here's, uh, I think this one comes from Wikipedia, no. Um, but anyway, in other words, like this curve, if we try to intuitively imagine what it is doing, um, it's kind of trying to move towards the, so it starts from one point and tries to move towards the end point, but uh, by doing, um, <clears throat> by moving along these uh, two lines at the same time. Mm. So <clears throat> you're, uh, you're moving along the first, like the shorter line, but then at the same time, you're also moving along that direction. So how, how do you describe this behavior mathematically, right? It looks like mm -hmm. it feels like gravity. It's like yeah, you're actually, pulling exactly. in or if you don't know like vertical because you know vertical very tired, you want to lie down, right? Imagine that like you are one person pull you this direction and another person pull you in the other direction. You're not gonna end up in either direction. You're just gonna go like yeah, in between the two of them. Yeah yeah actually exactly it's 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 near it's exactly like if you throw something mm. out, mm. You, get, you the curve is a parabola. So how, how does that parabola form? It's like you have an initial force, uh, no, initial velocity that goes mm. like horizontally. Yeah. And then you have, you have the gravity, gravity that acts downwards. Specifically, huh, this, this use case doesn't work if you throw straight out, straight out. Every, everybody is like, throw forward, uh, okay? Like short part. Actually, that short one part. is also, it can be generalized to that. Because uh, if you throw up and, it, it falls down. But visually, it, you won't see it, ma. Visual, yeah, you will, you will, have you will to, see is the, the object. Uh, you have to plot the velocity onto a graph to be able to visualize the curve. You know what I mean? Um, like, in, like, in the physical world, the path won't, you cannot see the path intuitively. Uh, yeah, it's, so, a you know bit, I mean? it's a bit harder uh, for you to uh, intuitively imagine that. But actually, it's actually the same thing. Yeah, Plus, yeah. The, the initial velocity, we're used to thinking of it as a magnitude, but actually it comprises of a direction mm. and a magnitude. Mm. So even if we're like throwing this, like, if I'm throwing it that way, then the initial velocity is, velocity is not necessarily completely horizontal. Yes, so it's like, correct. It can go like, likely it will go like towards an upper, uh, upper direction. So basically, if you all got play Maple Story, uh, or gun, there was a gun one. Bef when you, so there's this game, right? Last time I played secondary school, then like spent too much time on it. Oh. You go around bombing other people, and then you will have to like adjust the direction oh, of yeah, your yeah, I that. cannon, that one, right? Oh yeah, so it's like if y'all cannot understand what we're talking about, like what's <laughs> this ball throwing, right? Just think back to your, you know, like secondary school, then as you study, don't study, then go and play game. Yeah. It's the same mm -hmm. thing. Yeah, so, so, so the uh, throwing. Showing up is mm. is just another. Basically, you trying to bomb yourself. Yeah, yeah a special case of like throwing things like uh, without a yeah. without yeah, a horizontal yeah, yeah. like where the most mm. you can. Yeah. But then the, the actual physics is is the same. Um, actually, you can you can draw that with the Bayesian curve also. Actually, yeah. physics makes more sense to me than maths. Just saying, just saying. <laughs> I blame my father. Yeah. Moving on. Yeah. So anyway, in in Wikipedia, you will get this beautiful gift. I, I believe. So amazing. Uh, so here, what it does is you can you can you can see that this this point is trying to move like towards these two directions at the same time, mm. and um, that's actually exactly the approach of uh, the the Bayesian. A picture says a thousand words. So if you are only listening <laughs> to audio, sorry everybody. Well, as you don't look screen, Ayla. So, so basically how we want to do this in the computer today, right? Like time travel like 70 years later. Um, 70 years later. <laughs> is it 70? Yeah, probably. Uh, is to try to figure out what is the coordinate of that black dot. Mm. Um, so so here, here is, um, I'm, I'm going to start drawing. So first of all, I want to share with you like how, um, <clears throat> um, in, in a simple case, like how, uh, <clears throat> 
how we find um, how we find the uh, the dot, the uh, the final dot with the okay so yeah let me let me just start drawing I don't know okay. what I'm talking about while she's drawing right I will entertain everybody with what Jacob Jacob has revealed the game that I can't remember the name to Gunbound everybody is called Gunbound why yeah Jacob you just ate you just dated yourself you're like almost same age as us on hey old oh man just kidding guys always you yeah. um so basically for a simple case I'll just I'll just redraw the triangle but maybe this triangle is like yeah, draw your line as crooked as you can yeah, uh, and yeah. then like auto correct <laughs> Auto correct straight know, line. Right? Yeah. So so let's say we're trying to like like uh find find the basic find the curve that goes roughly from this first point uh to the to the final point. And um what we do is we try to depict this as a progression. Mm. So if we're talking about progression, we're talking about a number from zero to one. Zero meaning you just you haven't started and mm. one means you and finished. That, yeah. So uh so it goes from zero to one. And normally we call it T. Uh, maybe that stands for time. Um, <clears throat> um, so uh, let's say that our we want to find the twenty five percent progression of this. Mm. What we do is we find the twenty five percent of the first line first. This is not twenty five percent. Let me use another color. Right, somewhere here. A bit too. Can I okay. I'll keep. I'll, I'll yeah. keep my snarky opinion to myself. So I'm like they are squares. Yeah. So so, so you mind. find your first line. No, first first point mm -hmm. on on the on the first line, mm -hmm. and then similarly, you will need to find your, your corresponding twenty five percent on the no, other line. I think I think this is not twenty five. I was I was yeah. I, Everybody just use your imagination and imagine it's twenty five percent. Okay. Like no, that, I think I got it reversed because I got it. Ah, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so, yeah, so these are both 25%. Uh, <clears throat> She's epitomizing the mathematician mindset of approximation, yeah. everybody. And then, and then what you do is you connect these two dots. Also correct, yes. Yeah. And, and you have uh, <clears throat> a second line. Mm. Uh, now we notice that we are getting rid of one line segment. Mm. Um, <clears throat> and what you do next is... Um, just like a sec next generation, uh, this is precisely the word that we're gonna use later. So what you do again is you find the twenty five percent on on this on this uh, on this line segment. So normally we don't call it twenty five percent; we call it like point twenty point two five mm. to be the t. So so now this this point is going to be on the curve mm. on the final curve mm. but the final curve consists of many many points mm. it can consist of infinitely many points but how you actually get the <clears throat> the actual curve is well your engineer manager your ad manager is going to tell you like how many points we want to draw maybe not your manager but your 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 colleague is to or you are going to decide like how Basically, the, the, the threshold yeah, is yeah. like how much yeah. approximation is yeah. acceptable. So you you draw many many points and then eventually you will likely get a curve. Oh no, bad! Like, it's not like got improvement from last time. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> yeah, we watched this before. So we're like, hey, part yeah. two. Yeah. So, um. No, no, no. Okay. So yeah, the idea <laughs> is you uh you find twenty you find the progression uh you define the pro step. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Yeah, you define a step, maybe 500 or 1,000. Mm. And for every uh, one of those steps, uh, you will have a corresponding like T value. Mm. And then for that T value, you try to find the point, point. on the mm. curve. And, and also, as you can see here, like for any single T value, the progression you happen to have progressed on the curve is exactly the same. So on the first... On the first line segment, you are 25%, and mm -hmm. on the second line segment, you are also 25%, and then you get your intermediate generation of the, of the, of the line. Mm. And then, and then um, on that next generation of, of line, you use again, it to find the next point. Yeah, you right? still use the, 20, the 0.25 mm. progression to find the actual point. Mm. Yeah. So, so that's the rough idea. Um, and uh, it actually doesn't have to. Mm, <clears throat> so the the two uh, two line segment is a relatively simple case, and uh, <clears throat> um, so the next engineer we're gonna talk about. 
uh, is, uh, his name is D. I, Castillo. Castelju. Castelju. I find it easier to pronounce than Vizier, to be honest. But anyway, French, French, French everybody's French. Easier, easier to pronounce. Can, can. Castelju, so, <laughs> so, so actually, uh, D. Castelju, uh, he is actually the first one to have discovered this method mm. uh, using an, a constructive approach. Mm. So he, he described the whole process um, mm. in a procedural uh, algorithm mm. that he uses when he works uh, for C2. Oh, this one is the C2N guy. Ah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. today I learned. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> but then ah, Bezier is actually the one who formalized it, formalized the notation of using the points. Oh, so they were in competing yeah. companies mm. now? They, back then they also were. Right. Okay, well, anyway. Maybe in collaboration. Actually, I don't think, I don't know eh. Because automobile might be a bit more... Maybe not formally collaborate, but back then, their industry also like got a community. It's, it's more like even though you might not I feel like, be, uh, you think they're like browser vendors where like, yeah, people probably, imagine that they're fighting, but at least yeah, because they're just, everybody's just friends, right? Yeah, they probably are friends with each other. And maybe that's why like, Daisy knows about this and then formalizes. I don't think it's that big a community. Like, every no every else, are, right? Because they're a similar age also. Oh, maybe they were BFF. Okay, just kidding. Moving on. <laughs> yeah, so, but anyway, he, he devised this algorithm. And uh, <clears throat> so let me just draw another uh, graph to, 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 sh to show you again like, how it actually works. Seriously, um, like, if you are listening to audio, uh, don't uh, hey, must watch videos. Yeah. <laughs> like, this is like, really what's some, Tokong? Someone calls you audio. Uh, Who knows? There's a guy, someone like frying, frying fish, then like, yeah, 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 yeah I'll, I'll, I'll hear what's going on. You missing out half of the presentation, yo, yo. So this time we use like slight, time, slightly, slightly, life drawing. Sli slightly, slightly, uh, slightly more complex situation. We use uh, three control points. So together with the initial point, we have four points. Um, I love so this autocorrect. I'm not sure. Oh, okay, good enough. Yeah, and you then it's a square. To to uh to show like to be more precise, let's mm. also give them uh, coordinates. So I think this one will be zero and zero. Let's mm. just assume it's zero and zero. Mm. And this one will be zero. Let's say four, just for ease of okay. computation. Mm. And this one will be what four? Four. four. And then this one will be four, four zero. zero. And then also for ease of uh, calculation, let's just try to find a halfway point of what this curve eventually will be. So t will be 0. 0.5. Mm -hmm. So uh, what's our next like, blue color? Set of blue, blue color. Okay, can because which one? today is medium CM? blue. This one. Oh right, today is medium yeah. blue. Right, I missed the beginning part. Never mind, it's okay. We already okay. paid homage to PMD. Yeah, so that looks like our. It's a bit of uh, yeah, you think uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Again, and imagine. Then, and then this will be our second point. Then the midpoint should be supposed to be the midpoint, so everything should be like sent. Yeah, you, you can you can draw like Auto uh, correct <laughs> technology, my friends. So this will be our second set of points mm. and let's give them coordinates also so the first one will be like zero, zero two. two and then second one will be two two and two four, four. And and four, two. Will be four and two okay and then and then uh, similarly uh, next generation um, <clears throat> so we'll find the first point will looks like will be here approximately acceptable Low. Yeah, and then the coordinates will be average of zero and two will be one, and then average of two and four will be three. And this one will be three and three. Notice how we're losing one segment each time, and therefore also losing one point. So eventually we will land on the final point. This is a coral. Last one. Yes. Okay. So the final yeah, yeah. coral, coral, correct, correct. Yeah, so the final point will be here, and then uh, <clears throat> it's computable, uh, the coordinate will be 2, 2 and 3. Yeah. So this will be the, because we're left with one point, and then this will be the final point on the curve. 
And so we're, we've only calculated one curve, but uh, not one point. But if, if we do this likewise, like many, many times for many different t's, we'll get a curve. This, this is going to be challenging. We'll get a curve. That oh, and oh, our teacher say, don't use the, like, move the whole arm. Yeah. Can you do this? I use. <laughs> So, wait, yeah. you want to connect from here, is it? Yeah, you're, you're starting, then you're starting from the end point. Oh, nice, nice. I move my wrist. That's that's nice. just say wrong. That's okay, nice. never mind. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so that's how you... Th this is how the curve autocorrect. Yes. Sadly. <laughs> yeah, it would be nice if it does. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so, so yeah, this is how the D Casti rule the Castell rule. This Castell rule algorithm, algorithm works. And if you read into the books, uh, you will see something called the triangle triangular scheme. Mm -hmm. So uh, what uh, what is that, right? So um so uh, let's let's move this like oh, yeah. Let's move this a little away. So, so like I mentioned, uh, <clears throat> we are uh, getting, uh, we're recursively trying to uh, find some points uh, on the line segment. So, uh, what is really happening is like for the first set of points, we have been calling that generation. So, it's, uh, the first set of points is the initial control points. Mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> so, we have P Gen uh, zero, zero, zero index zero, everybody. Just so kidding. this is P0, P1, P2, and P3. And because we're computer engineers and uh, mathematicians, we like to start with zero instead of zero one. Index. Zero uh, index, everybody. So we have P0, uh, P1, uh, P2, and P3. And because it's generation zero, we uh, superscript it with like. P0, so P1, P0 of 0, P1 of 0, P2 of 0, and P3 of 0. Mm. So how did we get um, to the next generation? Uh, we decided it will be blue, and then this will be Gen 1. Uh, and so how did we get from generation 0 to generation 1? Uh, we did that. We find the first uh, point. Uh, this one will be... No in. Electronic <laughs> also can run no, in. Serious. LOL. Seriously. Hey, what's going on? Turn it off and on again. Answer, Bobetri. No, 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 no. It's 100%. <laughs> what's happening? Oh, yeah, yeah. Turn it okay. off and on again, yeah, everybody. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, P, P0 of the first generation, <laughs> how we found that, we, it's a linear, it's a combination, it's actually a weighted combination of P0 and P1. But mm. <laughs> what is the weight, right? No. So, uh, so remember how... Like, like, wait, now you lie. Where did yeah. this come from? <laughs> yeah, we, we use... We use a halfway point, which is slightly inconvenient for explaining intuitively what it is. But actually, uh, <clears throat> so how I perceive this is uh, right after it leaves the first point, uh, the the weight of the first point is nearly 100%. Mm -hmm. so, <clears throat> so that's when T is really, really small. Mm -hmm. So how we come up with this is we're taking the first point and we're multiplying the first point with 1 minus T, I think. Not working? Oh, yeah. <laughs> so we're multiplying the first one with 1 minus t, and then we're multiplying the second point with t. And that's how we... Oh, okay, okay. No, it's all. Yeah, so yeah, that, that's yeah, how we sense. get like p0 of one first generation. Ah. Right? And, then, <clears throat> and then likewise, uh, we're, we're using the same method to get like... Oh, shit. Sorry, I OCD. Yeah, so <laughs> this is p1 of the... <laughs> Of the sec first generation, so this is P1, yeah, and so once again we're multiplying the first point with one minus t. That's uh, this point, mm -hmm. and then uh, and the second point, that's this point mm -hmm. with t. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> and then similarly for the for the third P two of first generation. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so we're multiplying the first one with one minus t and then this one with t. Okay, so um, <clears throat> you can see how this goes. Um, <clears throat> and how do we get the third generation second. point? Second generation, yeah. <laughs> zero, one, zero, one, two, mm. yeah. 
uh, <clears throat> we once again we take this one and it will be multiplied by one minus t and then and this one by t and then we, that's how we get p zero of two two and then technology great amazing yeah p and then t right. and then finally we reach our Cora. Yeah, here's yeah. the final point. Wrong, wrong corner. Yeah. So the first one by one minus t, and this one by t. So this will be the <coughs> p uh, three, which is the final point. So, <coughs> so now, so now, uh, uh, first you of you know it's orange, not coral, right? Oh shit! N oh. Never mind. <laughs> I'm just yeah, saying. Yeah. Okay. You OCD yeah. straightness, I OCD Kara, so like, <laughs> yeah, whatever. He's by your friends, yo. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, I don't know, not, not close enough, but anyway. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> yeah, so, so we, we, we see a beautiful triangle here. That's, the, that's how they uh, name it, the triangular ah. scheme. Yeah, triangular scheme. Semantic also, naming, <clears throat> my friends. <laughs> yeah, and also notice how to deduce the final point. Mm. All we need is the coordinate of the first four points, mm. and then a bunch of t's and one minus p, one minus t's multiplied together, and mm. with a few like coefficients like mm. they, uh, multiplied together. And it turns out that these, these four, <laughs> yeah, it turns out these are Pascal's triangle. Or ding ding yeah. ding. <laughs> um, <laughs> the sound effects guy. Yeah. So the Pascal triangle, you can Google it. Uh, I'm not going into detail uh, here today. Um, Let's teach everybody how to spell Pascal. P A S C L L. Pascal. If I remember correctly, Actually, I don't know how to pronounce his name. Mm. I don't know if it's Pascal or Pascal or you know what I mean. I I don't know. I, I really don't also, know. I think he's also French. Seriously? Oh, these French people. Not, not, not sure. Haven't haven't justified, but it's okay. I'm partial to the French. <laughs> carry on. Carry I, on. I, I I just have an impression that he was French. Um. <clears throat> so. So the Pascal's uh, triangle gives you a quick or easy way to figure out what those coefficients are. Uh, basically, you start with like one, and then you get oh, you start with one, and then the next uh, <clears throat> uh, set of coefficients will be one and one, and then one two one, and then one three three one. So these will be the coefficients you will get like multiplied uh, in front of all the t's. Uh, <clears throat> but anyway, the point is, uh, <clears throat> we we only need the coordinates of the initial points, and then uh, uh, like with our engineering skills, we can punch in a bunch of t's, and then we can calculate. The final point. So engineering <laughs> skills flex. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So <clears throat> so that's uh, triangular scheme, ladies and gentlemen. That's uh, the cus. The, the Castelju algorithm. algorithm and the triangular scheme, and um, there will be a pseudo code. So, zoom, 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 zoom. Can you see? Uh, oh, sorry, yeah. <laughs> dan, dan. Yeah. Can very nice. Yeah. Okay. Sweet. So, so this is exactly what we just did. Uh, the draw curve pseudo. Actually, I think it probably be better named as draw point. Oh yeah, actually yeah. you're right. It's very important. Yeah. So segue. Our mathematically inclined friend Murray has shared with everybody who is not on Zoom but in YouTube. We must say Pascal Triangle was actually known by uh I don't know what's the name. Jia Jia Xian, whatever. Eleventh century Chinese scholar, centuries before Pascal. Be proud to be Chinese, everybody. Yeah, there is a there is a Chinese counterpart to Pascal Triangle. So in China, if you study like in, in elementary school, they, they tell you it's Yang Hui Shen. Not Pascal triangle, but Yang Hui. Who is Yang Hui? I think Yang Hui is like a Chinese Chinese mathematician. Like it's 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 means like his yeah, yeah. surname Yang mm -hmm. Yang Hui, yeah, yeah, Yang Hui right? Yeah, yeah. It's just not like some random. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Good Yang Hui sent him. So yeah, so the the this pattern basically multiplying a bunch of things with uh <clears throat> factor them out and the the coefficients. I think people uh figure out the pattern. Mm -hmm. uh, without, I guess they haven't talked to each other. But Math <laughs> is universal. <laughs> no language or cultural boundaries. 
Just say. Yeah. So so okay. Back to the actual. Yeah, segue so, over. <laughs> <laughs> um. <clears throat> so the drop point. Um. The the function uh pseudo code. Uh, the input will be the points. Those points are the initial control points. Mm. These are the only information. This is the only information co coordinations that, uh, that we need. And then we we also need a t to like mm -hmm. pre pre precision. Yeah, which, determined by t. <clears throat> Uh, actually, that's a progress. Progress. Oh yeah, because yeah, okay. yeah, precision yeah, is like one divided by whatever you need. Yeah, but then yeah, the okay. progress is t, whichever point you're drawing. Um, um, <clears throat> yeah. Makes sense, makes so <clears throat> so it's a it's a recursive procedure. So if we ding 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 ding, <laughs> the magic word has just come out. Everybody, we're playing drinking game. The word has come out. Recursive. Yeah. So so if we reach our final point already, which mm. means we we reach. The, the only one point that is left, mm. we draw that curve. We know that point is the on the actual curve. point. Yeah, the curve. actual curve. Mm. The actual point on the curve. Otherwise, uh, we're Everyone not there. Else is just a kind of yeah. Yeah. We're not there yet. So what we do is we try to calculate the next generation of mm. points from the previous generation. And <clears throat> and every generation, if you remember, we are losing one point. Mm. Therefore, uh, our new Generation point, the array will be one size smaller, so and then we try to fill all those points. And mm -hmm. how do we fill those? Uh, this is exactly what we just did. Mm -hmm. uh, we take each point and its next point, and we multiply the first point by one minus t, and then we might, uh, we multiply the second point by t. one, yeah, by t. And then those are our coordinates. We're assuming we're on in two dimensional world. Mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> this is our screen, but. Um, this can also go up to more dimensions. Like if we're doing something in the like augmented reality or 3D coordinate, mm, mm, um, mm, mm. it's the same thing. Yeah, so after we populate the next generation of points, we will call the recursive procedure with the ding, new ding, points. Ding, 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 ding. <laughs> Take a drink now. <laughs> if you're playing the recursion yeah. drinking game. With the, with the new points and then the same key. So, so yeah, that's the pseudo code. Um, <clears throat> after we understand what is going on, uh, it shouldn't be too hard to, it, it sh yeah, I mean, yeah, it can be implemented. So I, I happen to be uh, a React developer, so I implement this with React. Um, <clears throat> okay, so. Actually, it's very good that there's no audience because usually at this point, some people in the audience will just look at me very apologetically and say, sorry, 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 you're talking about JavaScript. Like, it's not I don't like JavaScript, everybody. It's just that I like CSS more, okay? Love is unlimited. Not a uh, zero-sum game. I think I need to close. I don't want to close all. I, oh, okay, got it. Yeah, so 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 let me just briefly uh, explain the, the <clears throat> this uh, this code. Um, so, uh, I do have some, uh, uh, some UI implementation. So the, uh, this first few lines, uh, I, um, uh, I created some controller basically to, um, for you to add or remove control points. Mm. So you do click, 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 then you add the control points. Mm. And uh, <clears throat> state management, everybody, <laughs> state management. And, uh, <clears throat> and then uh, once I get the control point, uh, we can get the T functions mm. by, uh, 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 we can go into the use draw curve later on, but uh, how we get the T functions is by using the decus, the rules algorithm, with calling them with the control points. We can query decus the rules keyword also. Yeah. Like. Ding, 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 ding. And then uh, this is a uh, this is like curry because if we go back to the another magical word came up currying everybody <laughs> ding 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 uh, y'all should be drunk by now. Yeah, if we go back to the pseudo code, uh, the second parameter is t, but I don't know t yet, so I want to partial uh, evaluate this function with uh, the points for now, mm. and then um, <clears throat> so after I get the t functions. Uh, I can determine the uh, step size, and it's like the threshold, mm. uh, how how refined you want your curve to be, and yeah, <clears throat> for for each of those eyes, uh, from one up until your step size, mm. uh, that that's our progression, and then uh, <clears throat> we want to push the final point, um, and we find the 
uh, we find the coordinate of the point by calling the t function. Um, mm. <clears throat> so, so the i divided by set size would be the t. And then after we populate this, uh, we get uh, all the points. And then for each of those points, we're going to draw the point, uh, I call it point on curve. Um, <clears throat> and Good name. Yeah, yeah. so, so that, that's how the code is structured. Um, if we go into the use draw curve uh, uh, hook, um, we can ignore the left and right for now. Um, <clears throat> so uh, this one takes uh, the, the array of points and then it, gen it returns a function of t. Um, <clears throat> so, so how it does that, this is exactly following the pseudocode provided by De Castillo. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so if, the, if we're left with only one point, we return the point. Mm. And then otherwise, we will populate the Next new step. points. Yeah. yeah. Mm. And by doing what we just discussed. Uh, <clears throat> uh, so these are the coordinates of the point. And then we return, once again, let's uh, not worry about the left and right thing first. So we call draw curve again and uh, <clears throat> call it with a new set of points and the same key. So, so this is, uh, we, we've never, uh, we, we did not try to be smart, we follow exactly the step. So uh, do you think it will work? <laughs> Actually, you know it already. Um, hey, don't give any spoiler alert. Nah. Hey, hey, hey. Uh, okay, so I think we should. So, so here, you, what you can do is you click, click, and click, get like this curve. Magic! Add, like, add more curves, uh, add more points. Where's my air horn? Yeah. <laughs> I have an air horn. <laughs> I mean, where's my phone? <laughs> yeah. Oh, really? No, it's not shut, not shut, not shut. Not shut, wait, 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 I have an air horn. Everybody, uh, take a break, let your mind, let, 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 let this simmer in your mind. Wow, I locate my five-year-old air horn. You should, uh, I, my audio may, may a deprecate, pa. Cannot be, cannot be. Sound. Bot. I hope. I remember my own URL correctly. Oh. Uh, so yes. angry, so angry. <laughs> Air horn, everybody. Amazing. Little my share. Good thing my share share. People so people can just click. They don't need to know the message. Like click, click, click. Uh, today my oh, boss okay. very annoying. Yes, click, awesome. click, click. Huh? Wow, today my boss made me do X. <laughs> click, click, click. Uh, yeah. I, I think. Fun. Probably, actually, there is a clear but. Uh, I think I think I did like this the other day, and then I'm like, um, yeah. So oh wait, do, you cannot do a spiral, ha! <laughs> uh, actually, you can. Uh, I forgot how I click the other one. Yeah. You think it's a specific method, method <laughs> of clicking? You can go figure it. Go yeah. figure out on your own, everybody. We'll share the link to the code pad, uh, code sandbox later. Shout out code sandbox, mm -hmm. amazing. It's quite, it's quite amazing. I also get bored like, after a night of clicking. You can't, you can't do it too much. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so... Ideally, you don't want your boss to piss you off every day, what? <laughs> like, oh, yeah, why today? Yeah. Every day also. Then that means you should probably, like, you don't get a new boss. Moving on! Yeah. So, so yeah, that's the implementation. And next, I want to talk about uh, a few properties of Bayesian curves. Uh, that one is also quite Please. interesting. Uh, <clears throat> so the first one, uh, is, well, it, it sounds trivial, uh, but there is implica implications after that. So the whole curve will always stay within the polygon that in encloses, that defines it. Mm. So, so what that means is, um, uh, the, the math term is called convex hull. It's a bit scary, but basically it means if you, uh, if you take a thread and, and you go around like all of these points, mm. right? And then the, the final polygon you will get is called a convex hull. Mm. So basically, uh, the property says your final curve will not go beyond this. Like, the bounds of the yeah. original poly, mm. po um, polygon. Yeah. So um, <clears throat> the actual, um, <clears throat> so this means you will be guaranteed to have a bounding box. Mm. Uh, bounding mm -hmm, box mm -hmm. is something we're more familiar with. Uh, it is not necessarily the the actual poly the convex hull, mm. but you you have an algorithm a constructive way of finding the the bounding box also. Mm. 
but uh, you are guaranteed that your curve will stay within, within the bounds of your yeah. box. <clears throat> box. Yeah, so that's the first one. And then the second one, you can, uh, if you have a very large curve, you can break the curve into a smaller piece by the T. Mm. Um, and each of those, each of the segments um, is still a Bezier curve. So that's, um, it sounds amazing, but after you think about it, right? Once we have this T, it's a progression. Mm. But what if I decide to walk up until this point and never walk again? So, so, so this point can be regarded as the end point of, my, of the journey that I have already walked, mm -hmm. but the starting point of the journey that I have not yet walked. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that T uh, separates the original Bezier curve into two Bezier curves. Mm. Um, and then uh, <clears throat> what's even more um, convenient hmm. is that um, the control points are already computed. So, oh, yeah. Mm, yeah. So we can see from here, uh, and, uh, <clears throat> I, think, I think we probably won't justify this. If you are interested, you can read some math text to see the proof. No. It's actually, it's, it's non-trivial. But, but we can see from here that the control polygon, the control points of the first curve will be the, um, the, first, like, um, the first point of the first generation. Mm. Uh, and then similarly, um, the other second, yeah, the other side is also, <clears throat> uh, so th this one is, is rather simplified, but if you have like uh, more control points initially, uh, the, <clears throat> The set of control points you get is um, so this is the final point, the yellow one, and then the previous uh, control point will be the the last control point of the previous generation, mm -hmm. and then and then the last control point of the previous previous generation. Yeah. So <clears throat> so with a bit of logging, uh, we can actually uh, also have all the control points of the first segment as well as the second segment. Um, so this is what the left and right thing that I, that I just talked about. Um, <clears throat> and you, you have a similar uh, pseudocode as well and you can check out the code. Uh, I think today I won't go into the detail how to do the left and right thing, but basically this is how you can actually draw uh, the, the two smaller segments of the curve uh, without even computing any more mm. control, control points. Yeah, so I, I actually just talked about this already. Yeah, <clears throat> so moving yeah. on with your life. Yeah, okay, so this is the pseudo code. Um, uh, we won't go into detail today. And then, uh, so uh, with the two properties that we just talked about just now, right? Um, <clears throat> it has like implications that I imagine my engineer friends will like. Basically, it means. Um, you can find the intersection of any two Bayesian curves mm -hmm. by continuously break, um, breaking down your initial Bayesian curve. Um, <clears throat> and, and then uh, after you break them down, your two curves each will have smaller bounding box. And you can check whether your bounding box has overlapped again. And so you reach the point where either your set of bounding boxes have no um, intersections at all, mm -hmm. or you, you keep going and you still get intersection and until at some point you reach pixel level. Mm -hmm. So you're doing one single pixel and they're still overlapping. Mm -hmm. Then, uh, <clears throat> so mathematically either they, uh, they're actually not yet touched, but they're really close. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, they're just really, really near each other, but close to a point where you no longer care because you're at pixel level and people cannot tell the difference. What's, um, what's the term for a curve that we just like keeps getting closer but never touches? What's, there's, a, there's a name for it, right? Do you, you know? You know, you know um, I yeah, yeah, but I, I also cannot recall it. Yeah, okay. Uh, or or you, you really have the Found the intersection point. Yeah, yeah. But then that's the engineer, like the engineer side of this, you have a threshold again. Mm -hmm. uh, once you pass that threshold, you still get the intersection of the bounding boxes. Then you or just take it. Acceptable as, approximation. Yeah. 
then, then you get your uh, acceptable intensity. Mm. Um, <clears throat> what's this? Check code. Oh. Is this a note to self? Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, and it's uh, not in the right order. Polyvisual curves, which are still not implemented in CSS, yes. everybody. Yeah, this is this is the I think I think in the issue that you share. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. So um, basically, you can you can join. It's not really joining. You're kind of connecting Bayesian curves to form. Uh, this is no longer one Bayesian curve, mm. but they're like segments of Bayesian curves. As you can see, the name is not cubic Bayesian, it becomes poly Bayesian. Yeah. So these are like... Uh, air horn, <laughs> air horn. Yeah, these are like <laughs> multiple Bayesian curves. Um, <clears throat> like joining joining together. I think, mm -hmm. I think I, uh, since I'm no longer drawing, let me stop sharing. Can, can I? I mean, stop trying um, to do, do whatever, man. Yeah, because yeah, um, like, now I, I, need, I need the power of a laptop now. Yeah, yeah. so uh, let me share from here. Does it work? I not yet, not yet, not yet. Okay, I got some effect for when it works. Okay, let me. Finger, finger. Sure you can test the action. Does it work? Oh, nice. <laughs> what, what's this? Final Fantasy. It's oh. got a big tree. I got a lot more. We can we can we can discuss this soundboard later. Okay. Okay. So um, so you can you can you can join them to form poly basic curves. That's actually the sweet spot that we just talked about. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, so they look nice enough, and um, <clears throat> but then the they also are backed by all the math behind. Uh, the Bayesian curves. So basically, here here's how it happens like intuitively. Uh, what you want to do is you want to match the both the velocity and the direction of the two curves. Mm. So you can see from here like these two segments um, are same length, and then they're pointing away from each other exactly a hundred. 80 degrees. Mm. So what happens if uh, they're not like that, right? So <clears throat> let's say like this. Maybe it's, it becomes really short, but still roughly same direction. You can see that the point is moving much slower. Mm. Or if you get like this, roughly the same length, but pointing at another direction, you also see like a sharp turn there. Yeah. So um, <clears throat> what you want to do um, is to make sure that the velocity matches uh, on the, on, uh, at the joint. Mm. So, <clears throat> so this is why. Like, um, I think I think once you see this picture, right, so so here it is a poly Bayesian curve, mm. and each connecting each other, mm. and then based on the restriction that I just talked about, if we change something here, and this side will try to match that. Uh, that segment. So this is why, like, like it's kind of like everything is moving. Mm. Um, but then if we use um, cubic Bayesian curve, mm. um, you can imagine if I change it here, only this like, this segment will move, yeah. but this part won't. So <clears throat> this is how you can like, actually make some local changes, but without affecting the whole curve. Mm. So <clears throat> that's um, I believe that's part of the reason why they choose cubic Bayesian curve because you have this um, <clears throat> uh, this nice property that goes around the globe, uh, the non-localness. Uh, it's like a limitation of Bayesian curve. Um, <clears throat> but then you can keep connecting and then um, to form a more like, uh, rich curve that you might actually need. At this point, I guess the more, it will be more relevant from, for those of us who have to do uh, graphics. Mm, so this yeah. is uh, uh, this is the reason why I thought about the timing thing uh, earlier <laughs> because that's a this is not really CSSE. Um, yeah. but but it is very very relevant for SVG because yeah. um, uh, I don't know how many of you would hand draw your own sheet, but like I did have to hand draw my own sheet in a past life. Uh, and and like clearly uh, maths is not my strong suit. So what do I do? I use a measure my eyeballs. To eyeball all the diagrams. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You you might actually enjoy this game, but it's called Bayesian game. So what you try to do is you. I think this is what a graphic designer 
So basically, if you use like Illustrator or the um Figma sketch, they will, if you use the pen tool, this is basically the same interface. I, I'm apparently like. Not, not good at this game. Can practice one, can practice one. Can practice one, can practice one. But this made perfect. Yeah. yeah, so limitations. One is, uh, like I mentioned, is not local if we, if we remember when we calculate. Not model shapes. Oh, uh, typo. Oh, model. Yeah, yeah. Uh, huh? yeah. How to, what is a model shape? Very <laughs> confused. Yeah. So, so. Capital K. K confused. <laughs> Com confused. Mm. Yeah, so, so uh, anyway, non-localness talks about how you, if you recall uh, how we calculate a point on a curve, mm. uh, we actually, uh, so at every segment takes part in it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so once we change the T, like, at every segment, mm. we're using a new T. Everybody so, gets affected. Yeah, mm. so, so in a Bayesian curve, uh, changing one, uh, Point. Control point will change your the whole, whole shape. Yeah. Uh, sometimes, if you have very high order curve, it might not seem that obvious, but uh, it's actually changing the whole curve. Mm -hmm. um, so that's non localness. Yeah. Um, um, so that's why. Uh, so there, there is more advanced math uh, uh, <coughs> technique for that. Basically, the the spline thing that the the, the, yeah, the poly the poly. Poly Bayesian curve is mm. uh, trying to handle, and then the connection. And then uh, the other limitation is that you cannot precisely model uh, circles or eclipses. Um, we will talk about this later. <laughs> that's also another like, limitation of the Bayesian curve. But once again, you will have to have a mathematical tool that you will have. Mm. Um, <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, these are curves in browsers. So, yeah, this is, this is not a This CSS is your one. big attempt to try to link it back to CSS. <laughs> Don't worry, we already covered that for you. So, <laughs> Bearki be, be is okay. Uh, can. Yeah, it's, well, yeah, if you look beyond CSS, well, CSS, the timing functions, actually timing functions, I, I think, um, okay, it's oversimplification to visualize it directly as the, uh, the, curve. Para, parabola throwing things because what it really does is it, it's kind of uh, twisting your time because it's timing function. It, uh, it is, it's, it's modeling the speed at which yeah. your whatever you want to animate. Yeah, yeah. So so yeah, CSS definitely one use case in uh, our uh, <coughs> our work, and then SVG paths, which we so, also already talked about already. <coughs> Oh yeah, so uh, in SVG, if we draw a path, mm. uh, the SVG command goes like there is an M, uh, which means move to, and and then and then L means okay, I think I'm not explaining this like properly, so while you scroll, uh, okay, you're yeah, there. I was gonna say yeah, something yeah, sure. about SVG, but never mind. You mm. finish first. Yeah, so, so the path is, you define a path this way. Mm. The letter M means uh, move, so you move yeah. to 100, 100 coordinate. And then L means uh, line, mm. so from 100, 100, you draw a line to 300 and 100. Mm. And then you draw a line again to 200, 300. And then Z means you close the curve. Mm. But then you don't have, uh, you might want to draw a curve instead of the straight line. And so <clears throat> that's the cubic base, Cubic Bayesian curve commands come from. It's a C, and then S is slightly different. It means to use the previous endpoint as the as the first control point, mm -hmm. um, and then so you can so it's actually implemented in SVG already. And then uh, you have two options. You have the cubic version. You also have the quadratic. Quadratic means two. Power two. Power two. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cubic power tree, yeah. everybody. So just like, just in case you forgot what a secondary yeah. school math teacher told you. Yeah. So basically, cubic means you have three <laughs> control points, and then quadratic means you have two. two. Yeah. What was the thing you wanted to talk about? Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> some people who you are in the data visualization uh, uh, space uh, uh, or web development, uh, shout out Shirley Wu, who showed up. We managed to get her for JSConf Asia in 18. Um, she's 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 actually quite fair. If you are if you do data visualization, you'll know who she is, Shirley Wu, and she draws her SVGs 
by hand. Based on, because now you already know the secret. She already explained to you what the C, <laughs> what the M, what the L is. You can actually, according to her, la, she mm. is faster for her to draw by hand. Um, <laughs> but yes, yeah. SVGs, you, you don't really have to draw them by hand after you know this, but you can tweak because you know what, and you know what number to tweak because I uh, actually also take my SVGs by hand. But I don't draw them by hand. I can <laughs> just take the numbers by hand. Yeah. Yeah, yeah so yeah, basically, uh, cubic, uh, physical already Practical implemented. applications of uh, cubic Vizier yeah. functions, yeah. everybody. Yeah, if you do not want to write the the Castel Joe ding 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 by yourself, uh, you you already have like the browser already does it. Because <clears throat> you think you're very good at maths, but the browser can do maths <laughs> better than you. Yeah. So uh, it should not be surprising to you that Canvas has. Its counterpart, it's also canvas. <laughs> I know my sample, I'm sorry, yeah. Yeah. Too. yeah. So so it says um, Bayesian curve two. So it's also because semantic naming is a thing, everybody. <laughs> yeah. So uh <laughs> yes, because it's <this> order. <laughs> yeah, so we, topic. Um so if we take uh, a step even further. Like this, of course, browser also random fonts, but then this is a just, superset. Yeah, browser yeah, yeah. is a subset, but superset yeah. is graphics rendering. Everybody. Yeah. So, so uh, a font glyph is defined like this. Uh, this once again this is not a single Bayesian code, but it's should, more should like a font talk one these days. Oh my god. Actually, Tiger, Tiger, Tiger talked about this. Like, 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 no hard shell. Tried, tried. Yeah, tried. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, a font is saved in the computer this way, and this is actually just a bunch of like basic codes. This is how PostScript works, everybody. Post yeah. Script. Next, next slide. PostScript. So it's actually yeah, it's basic code empowered programming language. PostScript is the very first vector mm -hmm. font released by Adobe. I uh, can't remember the name because I've not given this talk in like uh, two years. But yeah, this is uh, this is essentially what they used to to like. To say. Use. Um, I think that that, that this one uh, a lot of the other font formats had come after this because mm -hmm. the, the, the end you, you, you cannot you, raster fonts is just you, you can't like, you really mm -hmm. cannot mm -hmm. so this was the first vector font that ever released commercially on the market and I think uh, Adobe made a bomb out of it like seriously mm -hmm. but yes fonts yeah. maybe we will have a fonts talk someday hin hin mm -hmm. no much <laughs> else yes I hope he's watching I don't know yeah no, his no. cat is watching so yeah that's the Curve. References will be shared uh, with everybody in the <laughs> newsletter that nobody uh, subscribed. Actually, not true. Lah. According to the tiny letter, I have 40 subscribers. I don't know if they open the mail or not, lah, but I spam you every month anyway. So. I'm one of the 40. Amazing! Yeah. Actually, half of them are my own, I, our own people. So sad, right? Okay, anyway. Yeah. More references, everybody. <laughs> because one page is not enough. Right. Amazing! Okay, okay, okay. I still got one more appropriate song. Excellent. I stole this from somewhere. If anybody can, I'll play again. If you can, you, you can tell me where I stole this from. Uh, you won't get a prize. Uh. Maybe I'll give you a sticker and see your face. Excellent. Okay, I played it twice. Uh. You all tell me where I got it from. Eh, 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 eh. Yeah. Oh, there's another slide, huh? Yeah. Okay, okay. Thank you, everybody. Please give virtual applause. Like, wash hand, the wash hand. <laughs> I like why everybody want to wash hand on YouTube. If you if you don't get the wash hand, what I'm talking about, um, nema you also go and figure out. Uh, you 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 should get. I got uh, I only got. Okay, a bit long today, so I will cut short my announcement session. Se se section share screen. Desktop. You think I know how to do this? Hi, Chris. Uh, anyway, this is tangentially relevant to Chris. Announcement skip because only I got announcement. Uh, RK happening Friday, I uh, already said already, uh, Venerable Sufu is going to be on, so everyone must tune in. And subscribe, subscribe to, to RK because uh, we will not, we will go, like, yeah, we are 500 by end of year. Moving on. Um, okay, so uh, uh, we are partnering with Web Directions Code. 
So as you see, Chris's head pop in and out. Everybody must please remember that Chris is now back in Australia, uh, in Melbourne. So I, uh, he will be involved in Web Direction Code, which is now a remote conference. And they have gone with an a, a interesting format, whereby it's not just one day conference, it is a weekly conference. Uh, also, they have tried to structure it that optimize for Southeast Asian time zone. Uh, so as you can see, wow, thanks, thanks. Um, September, whole month lah, whole month, then 9am to 12.30. Um, the code, the discount code is Singapore CSS, but according to the, the guy, his uh, organizer, his name is John, right? He's saying he's trying to do a uh, billing for SGD. So your whole office, remember that the, the discount code is uh, Singapore CSS, it's like $100 off. Um, so, but I let you all know first, you know, I implant this idea in your brain. Uh, like then you all can mark your calendar first. Like, if you want to go and part no, 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 no. You bring the part person to come watch this uh, conference with you. Uh. But anyway, I'll keep reminding everybody about this. Just let you all know first. So, uh, yes, it's a uh, CV now, uh, phase two. Uh, you all could have gone out to like, I don't know, go and meet girlfriend, meet boyfriend, meet, meet wife if the wife or husband nearly with you. But, you all uh, still chose to tune in uh, and, and we are, are very thankful that you continue to support the most anyhowly meetup in Singapore. Uh, okay, don't touch your face, don't touch any other people. Okay, thanks. Uh, bye. We will see you next month if next month happens. All right. Cut. Cut. I don't have the YouTube window open because I was forced to close it. So like somebody please turn it off for me. Thanks. Oh. In the meantime, Me? yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> the non local won't get this. What's this? <laughs> we'll explain to you later. Can you help me off the YouTube? Me? Yeah. Because I think we're still streaming. Really? Uh, off now, ma.